So they still make a small square baler. SB 541. I like to see that they got the knotters covered for people that leave them sit outside. Here's the active drive eight. You can slow the tractor or bring it to a stop without using the clutch pedal. Here's a round baler. There's a cutter off to the side. The 240 Puma. There's a large square biller. You can go through. Hello, how are you doing this morning? Good, good, thank you for coming to the Kansai 8 group. Everything's red. If you have a red tractor, that means you have more friends. Just keep that in mind as you're walking around. So uh, we got Max Armstrong coming up in a few minutes, so if you're out there wandering around, come on back in. He's got some great stuff to tell you. And uh, my name's Tim. I'm a dairy farmer. Thank you. Um, all right. You know you're a farmer if when you die, you want farm credit to be your pallbearer because they've already been carrying you for most of your life. You guys know what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm a dairy farmer. I was just happy my last milk check had a comma because my fertilizer bill had two um, that's how it goes but i grew up on a farm like many of you i grew up on well water if you don't know what well water is that's when they drill a hole right next to the septic tank and then they pump that out and the whole family drinks it and that's how i ended up here in illinois but Seriously, there was so much lead in the water that I grew up on, we would go deer hunting with squirt guns. I rot my own material in case you're wondering at this point. There was so much heavy metal that when you turn on the kitchen sink, you could hear ACDC. <laughs> this was good. Uh, so all the FFA kids are running around to see that. I was an FFA. We got in trouble in FFA in my chapter for crossbreeding different animals. We crossed a jackass with a skunk. We got an attorney. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I'll be here all week. I'll be here all week. So, uh, oh, thanks, Max. Appreciate that. I'm bringing you up, buddy. That's. I got a few things. That, no. Hey, and on your seats, there's a can of uh, of uh, can do red. That's not a dip can, that's actually got a shop towel in it, so they're free. Feel free to take them. There's a booth over here that you can get them. And uh, look around, uh, Case, it's built by farmers. Many of the workers, a lot of them out here, the salespeople you talk to, the representatives, they are farmers. They've probably driven this equipment, so feel free to talk to them. They're quite knowledgeable. And actually, one of them is funny. She gave me a joke, and I'm going to tell you this joke because she's so funny. Why do cows have hooves? Because they lack toes. Ha! That, we're not just smart and friendly here at Case. We are funny. We are funny, so keep that in mind. Are you ready to see Max Armstrong? Yeah. Three of them are, Max, the rest of people. All right, you know who he is. He needs no intro. Put your hands together for Max Armstrong. Tim the Farmer, thank you, thank you. Well, are you having a good time at the show today? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, it's warming up now, but we can't complain too much about this, can we? Yeah, we are, some of us recall what it was like back in the day to come out at the show. I mean, at the, especially when it was the end of September, beginning of October. You never knew what kind of weather you would have. In fact, you'd get it all sometimes in, in three days. Uh, we started uh, at this site in 2005 but were any of you at the previous illinois site in 2003 over at henning a little town of henning in vermilion county and there were two good well we had two good days on the weekend as we held the very first half century of progress and then on that tuesday it was a beautiful day for the farm progress show first thing wednesday morning five o'clock in the morning if you looked at the radar sweep for the midwest 
that second day of the farm progress show it was a clean sweep except right over the farm progress show site i mean there was a cell about 10 miles in diameter that just camped there it rained out days two and three of the farm progress show that year and i know what exhibitor told me he said i spent eighteen thousand dollars on wood chips and uh, of course there were many people who said you know we need to have permanent sites and that's when they went to this site and then they cited Boone, Iowa, where the show will be next year. They looked at, I am told that they actually looked at, the old air base at Rantoul for the possible site for the Farm Progress Show. But when they passed it up, that's when we took a look at it, of course, for the half century of progress. Did any of you go there last weekend? Oh, man, did we have fun. I'm telling you, there didn't we have fun? I never have seen so many people with smiles on their faces all across that crowd and i met people personally from 36 states there and it was just a great time and uh, we had the old tractors out there working in the field uh, we even had a super bowl champion there there's a farmer who uh, played uh, for the giants the new york giants in the super bowl when they won the super bowl he was the fullback a fellow by the name of uh, uh, hitchcock yeah, Madison Hedgecock is his name, and he farms down in North Carolina. And the story behind his farming, he played for St. Louis for a while before he went to the New York Giants, and in both instances where he played, he went out into the farmland and farmed on Tuesdays, the day off in the NFL. He was telling me that story the other day up there along one of the runways. But that's such a neat place to hold that show because we have about a thousand acres that we get to use in some way, shape, or form for that show. The taxiways, the runways, and everything else there. Uh, so we get to play there for about five days, actually four days of the show, and it's just a great ramp up to this show. So I think give us an even better appreciation for all of the technology that has come to bear here, and all of the engineers that have preceded the talent that we have these days bringing the new machines to the fore. So we'll talk about some of this equipment just a little bit later on while we're here. Some of you have asked about my buddy Ori and Samuelson. I think this is the first show that he is not attending, the first Farm Progress show. Orion is 87, and he's still in remarkably good health. And we've been partners for uh, our near 44 years, I think it is. Uh, his legs are starting to wear out a little bit on him. He, uh, he's, you know, he's a tall guy, 6'4", so he, he's uh, put those legs to the test through the years, slowing down a little bit. He couldn't get up in his airplane anymore, so he actually sold his airplane earlier this year, that Cessna 210 that he bought after the rally of the soybean market in 1983. Yes, there was a correlation there. But over the period of years, Orion had five guys flying that plane. Three of them were at a little reunion that we had just a, a few weeks ago there. And we went into a lot of different airports. I asked one of those pilots, I said, would you do me a favor and go back through the log to see all of the places where that plane landed. I'd like to see, I, because in many recent years, I was in that plane, I think, more than Orion was uh, at times. And uh, most of those were good trips. I had one from coming back from Kokomo, Indiana one night. It was a little bit touch and go. I was so glad to see those lights of the runaway up there at Aurora where we were putting down to that plane. But it was a, we went, it was a stormy night. And after that, I became what you call a severe clear flyer. <laughs> I don't want to be out in, in those stormy conditions. These days, the stormy conditions are in the cabin of commercial airliners. Maybe you've heard, it's tough back there. If you've not been on a plane, you probably can't fully appreciate, but you've heard about fights breaking out, people being slugged. It's really kind of rough because people who never fly, have never flown, have been on airplanes in recent weeks. Uh, they're using their newfound money that they've gotten through stimulus checks and they're flying to see loved ones they're flying to vacation spots and it's a little tough back there I, i'll be honest with you it's not fun flying right now and i'm a guy who flies a lot i was doing a little calculation a few days ago and, and we moved my wife and i moved down into north carolina i'm back and forth every week well tim was talking about lawyers our daughter married one and i like it and my wife loves this guy, so that's, that was a good find. But I could see the headlight of the locomotive coming down the tracks at me, and my uh, wife would uh, want to be down there where the grand girls would be someday. So we moved down there. I've been flying a lot on about 700 flights over eight years, I think. So I'm used to sitting in that seat, but not the 
kind of conditions we have now. We were late coming out of Nashville a couple of weeks ago. I was headed back to Raleigh late on a Friday night. Everything was going wrong. The labor problems are part of the challenges, having enough laborers. The airlines are going through it like everybody else. We're pulling away from the gate, and the captains have been very firm in their announcements with the folks flying about uh, wearing your mask. It's the rule. you got to wear it because people don't want to be masked up when they're on the plane. So the pilot had made that announcement, and then he said, I know we're late. I apologize. i got to get home to Mama, so we're going to fly this thing like we stole it. And we pulled away from the gate and took off. So it was a good ride home, late ride home, but at least we got there. But uh, maybe things have calmed down a little bit. What you don't see on airplanes now are many business flyers. You know, there aren't many laptops, and I'm wondering if that'll start to pick up a little bit now. I think I know this young lady down there. Are, aren't you in social media? Do I see you on Twitter and come up here? I need to talk to you. You just light up the social media every time you're on. And forgive me for not remembering your name. Uh, Aaron Holbert. Aaron, Aaron Holbert, and you're from the Hoosier State. Yes, thank you. are a Boilermaker. Absolutely. See, there was another reason to talk to you. <laughs> you, and whenever you post from the cab, everybody loves it, Max included. I, I love the shots that you, you show us as you're uh, per shepherding the equipment through the field. You are actively involved in the operation, aren't you? Uh, yes, I work for my dad full time. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, what tasks do you enjoy most in a farming operation? Uh, definitely running the Aubrey cart. Huh? You know, you know, Raven has the uh, autonomous card here. Do you think they're ever going to replace you? Well, I think my dad would like that. <laughs> Is that your pop over there? Yes. I, I just wondered who was responsible for this. Now we know. She is <laughs> something else. Erin, it's just a treat to meet you. Seriously. You just, in such a wholesome way, you light up the, the social media. There's, the, you know, there's nothing mean or or dirty or anything, and uh, like old Captain Stubby used to say, you know, it's it's the kind of thing you could, you know, you could talk about in church or in front of your mom, and, and it's really neat to watch your post in social media. Well, thank you. I have to watch what I say because my grandma watches it. Yeah, there you go. Aaron, so nice to meet you. Have a good day at the Farm Progress Show. How about a round of applause? I need to tell you. So here's a case 540 quad track. Quad track is their name of their system with four tracks whereas the other one was delta track the versatile here's a 620 i think i'll get inside that one it's a ways to get up here but we did her all right so that was max armstrong he is from the farm shows and he said Lee Bryce will be here country singer I don't know if he's gonna perform or not but 5 30 p.m. so I'll probably stick around and see if I can see see him or hear him or whatever so this is the quad track that I monitor here the buddy seat this thing swivels too, just like the other one. So this is the case area. There's just so much to see here. I can't show you everything, but I'll get what I can until my batteries run out. Here's our sprayers. You can see how long that is. So this is a case WD2505 wind rower. And the header is a case RD195. Uh, it's got discs that spin instead of a sickle bar. And now I'll show you how this works. So these are timed. So if they get out of time, they'll hit each other. I'll show you in a second. Let's see how they spin. <laughs> 